modify events, the Baltimore City Council inauguration had to go virtual. Now, I present to you the 73rd installation of your Baltimore City Council. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty Let our rejoicing rise High as the listening skies let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the that the present has brought us facing the rising sun of a new day begun let us march on till victory District residents, I am Danielle McCray, and I am standing in front of Bertha Soul Food in the heart of the Bel Air Edison community. I am wishing you a safe and happy holidays, and I look forward to working with you for the next four years. I am Councilman Stokes from the 12th District. I'm standing here in front of the Greenmount West Community Center, and I want to say happy holidays, have a safe holiday, and please wear your mask. This is City Council Member Zeke Cohen of Baltimore's 1st District. I'm here with my friend and council tenant president, Stephen Barnes, outside of the O'Donnell Heights Boys and Girls Club. The first district is vibrant, diverse, and funky, just like this mural behind me that was painted by our children. I'm excited for this next chapter of our great city. I'm Councilman Antonio Glover, representing City Council District 13, right here in the heart of East Baltimore. I'm excited to have beside me the organizer for Challenge to Change, Uncle T, who is doing outstanding work right here in our community. Happy holidays and be safe. Hello, residents of the 4th District. I'm Mark Conway, your new councilman, and I'm super excited to be standing here in Belvedere Square along our Yorker Corridor. This year has been very difficult for many of us, but I have no doubt that together we can overcome these challenges. I want to wish you and your family a safe and happy holiday, and I really look forward to serving you as your councilman over the next four years. Hey Baltimore, I'm 8th District Council Member Christopher Burnett, and I'm here at the Curry Murray Nature Center in Gwynn's Falls, Lincoln Park, the second largest urban park in the country. And I know we've had a rough year with the COVID-19 pandemic, but I am so excited to help move our city forward and continue the fight on the Baltimore City Council. I am Councilman Isaac Gitsi Schleifer, and I'm excited to be standing here at the Pimlico Racetrack, right in the center of the 5th District. We've been through some challenging times, but exciting changes are coming to the 5th District, including the redevelopment of this site. And that should encourage us all that our best days are yet to come. This is Councilman John Bullock. Welcome to the 9th District and the historic Hollands Market, the longest continuously operating public market in Baltimore. For over 200 years, it's been going strong. Even after a renovation and going through COVID, we're all looking forward to a brighter new year and a better future ahead. I'm Councilman Eric Costello, and I'm honored to represent Baltimore City's 11th District. I'm outside the childhood home of Thurgood Marshall. While we've had our fair share of challenges, just like Thurgood Marshall, our nation's first black Supreme Court justice and one of its greatest jurist minds, I see nothing but opportunity. I'm Councilwoman Felicia Porter, and we are in the heart of District 10 at MedStar Harbor Hospital. 
there are many transformative projects coming to South Baltimore. It is my true honor to serve you as your councilwoman to ensure that we truly build and create healthy communities for all of South Baltimore. I'm Councilmember Ryan Dorsey from District 3 and I'm in Herring Run Park. From where I'm standing, I can see my grade school, the street I grew up on, and the neighborhood where I've lived for more than 25 years, as well as a bright future for Baltimore. I look forward to what comes next. I'm Odette Ramos, representing the 14th District City Council, and today we are in iconic Clifton Park. We have so many great neighborhoods, people, and assets in our district. I'm so honored and ready to serve. I look forward to working with all of you and my colleagues on the City Council to make transformative change in our city. Hello, District 6. I'm Councilwoman Sharon Green Middleton, and we are here today in the heart of Park Heights. I know there's been some challenging times, but we are here to wish you a safe and happy holiday. I'm Councilman James Torrance. I'm standing in front of the Rawlings Conservatory and the Gym of Baltimore and also the 7th District, Druid Hill Park. We have experienced hard times this year, but I know great days are ahead, especially as we look to this great park in the Gym of Baltimore. As it's being renovated, we're gonna have a new green space, but as well a new pool and other amenities in this park. So believe and continue to think about a better Baltimore. Welcome everyone. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for attending uh, the 73rd installation of your Baltimore City Council. You know, obviously this is not the, 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 the type of position we will want to be in today. Uh, we would love to have the city enjoy uh, this festive occasion, this memorable occasion of with us. Um, but like many of you who had to cancel plans or modify plans uh, because of the coronavirus, uh, we ensured that we uh, 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 executed uh, this inaugural uh, to the best of our ability of the city charter, uh, but also ensuring that we took um, the public health uh, at its top priority. You know, as the Council of the City of Baltimore, it's important for us to model the behavior uh, that we want our citizens to model, uh, understanding and knowing uh, the current condition that we're in. Uh, so with that, I'll call up our newly sworn in, our amazing city comptroller, uh, my buddy, my friend, Bill Henry. Good morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And uh, an early congratulations, Mr. President, and to the members of the council. Uh, this is a great day for the city of Baltimore. We know that we have a, a tough task ahead for all of us, but we know uh, with this group of people and the folks that we swore in earlier and obviously our wonderful comptroller, together we will make Baltimore the best representation of itself. It will not be easy, but together we will, and we will do it each and every day by doing the hard work. Uh, I have the honor and distinction of swearing in a, a young man that I got sworn in together for the first time on December the 8th of 2011. Uh, someone who I watched be a father to two beautiful girls, uh, someone who is a wonderful husband to our state's attorney and who loves and bleeds this city. Uh, I know that every day that Council President Mosby is going to work hard to make uh, the city that he has lived in his entire life the best version of itself. He knows what it feels like to grow up here in Baltimore. He may have had a bad choice of high school, but we'll leave that alone for now. <laughs> but every day that he wakes up, he wants Baltimore to be better. Because like me, he knows how it feels to live in a city that doesn't believe and young black boys, and we're gonna to work together to change that for everybody in Baltimore to know that they can be whatever they want to be. And it's up to us to build that foundation for them to do that. So Mr. President, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I 
Nick Mosby, Nick Mosby. Do, solemnly do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland and support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully, diligently and faithfully without, partiality or prejudice, without partiality or prejudice, execute the office of the President of the Baltimore City Council, according to the Constitution and laws of this state. And that I do further swear that I will not directly or indirectly receive the profits or any part of the profits of any other office during the term of my acting as President of the Baltimore City Council. Congratulations, Mr. President. Congratulations. Congratulations. Council members, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. All right. And council members, we're going to, so that everyone has a chance to have their name be heard, uh, we are going to go down the line. I'll start with Councilwoman Ramos, go to Councilwoman Porter, uh, ladies first, gentlemen, and then <laughs> come to Councilman Torrance and go down the road that way. All right? Everyone, please raise your right hand. Aye. 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 Odette Ramos. Felicia Ray Louise Porter. James Ricky Torrance, Jr. Antonio Glover. Mark Stephen Conway, Jr. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly, Do solemnly swear. swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. To the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and the laws thereof. And that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, and to the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully. Diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, without partiality or prejudice, execute the office of city council. Execute the office of city council according to the constitution and laws of this state. According to the constitution and the laws of this state. And that I do further swear. And that I do further swear that I will not directly or indirectly. That I will not directly or indirectly receive the profits, receive the profits, or any part of the profits, or any part of the profits of any other office during my term, of any other office during my term, as a member of the Baltimore City Council, as a member of the Baltimore City Council. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you. And now, officially, for the first time, I'd like to introduce Council President. Nick Mosby. Baltimore, I am honored and I am humbled to stand here as your city council president. I intentionally emphasize your because I and my colleagues of the city council work for you. To God, our Father, who makes all things possible, to my elected colleagues, both past and present, uh, in whose shoulders I stand, I would like to thank, acknowledge, and commend our Mayor, Brandon Scott, and our Comptroller, Bill Henry, for standing here with me today. Who knew, as seatmates 10 years ago, we would all be standing on this stage in these positions? Take those odds. To my colleagues of the 73rd City Council, congratulations to each one of you and your families. I am incredibly blessed to take this journey with you uh, as my partners in progress. To the people of Baltimore, as I assume the mantle of president of your City Council, I deeply understand the importance of this opportunity. But moreover, I understand the importance of this moment. When I think about what this council has the potential to accomplish, I think about the transformative change that is needed and that we as a council should strive to achieve the lives of Baltimoreans, like Ms. Williams. 
See, Ms. Williams lived in what was once a regal neighborhood in a large three-story row house on a broad tree-lined street of West Baltimore. Ms. Williams wasn't a wealthy woman, but Ms. Williams worked hard, saved her money, and invested in the American dream, her home. To her dismay, decades later, that American dream was no more. The middle class, especially in Baltimore's black neighborhoods, started to rapidly vanish. As deindustrialization of Baltimore took its final course and manufacturing jobs like the one at Bethlehem Steel went away, unemployment rates began to rise and po population fall. See, Ms. Williams' home and its beautiful backdrop was her biggest investment. It was her safety net. It was her savings account, and its walls held a lifetime of memories that unfortunately afforded her a front row to its decay. I remember standing in the house adjacent to Ms. Williams' home and walking up and looking up at the sky. That's right, the sky. Because the roof had collapsed. Water damage was an understatement and rodents, mold, and decay were the only occupants. See, my electrical engineering degree brain got to work, and I saw a clear sense of hope, optimism, and vision for the potential of this beautiful neighborhood. I decided to buy that vacant house that day, right next to Miss Williams. And it was a dilapidated house that sat empty for 20 years, but I saw the promise in our city. When others could look past the, the blight, I saw the potential and the love for that community. At the time, I didn't know Miss Williams, never heard of her, but sense of optimism and her sense of frustration was literally connected by a brick wall. I was so optimistic about this community, and she was so frustrated by it. Unfortunately, this is Baltimore's story. The potential of our city is immense, and yet the violence, the poverty, the blight have for far too long created negative realities and perceptions of our great city and victimized those like Ms. Harris and Ms. Williams and Ms. Baker in this neighborhood all across the city of Baltimore. I stand today to tell you that these ills and this all too pervasive perceptions are not incurable conditions. Problems have solutions and you elected us to be your problem solvers. And in partnership with public and private sectors, local, state, and federal government, the philanthropic institutions, our faith-based community, and most importantly, you, the residents of Baltimore, we took an oath to not have the job, but to do the job. And we're ready to do that today. Many of the afflictions we deal with today were created through policy. This very body, the Baltimore City Council, enacted the, the nation's first racial zoning law 110 years ago. Its passage restricted black families from moving into white neighborhoods. The New York Times called Baltimore, and that time, the most pronounced Jim Crow measure on record, and built the efforts of Baltimore's drastic plan to have race segregation in our city. Another strategy that intentionally economic, that provided intentional economic apartheid was the infamous 1937 realigning map in which neighborhoods were color coded to guide mortgage lenders in granting loans. Black neighborhoods were marked with red and labeled, of course, the riskiest to lend to, and then hit urban renewal. It hit families like mine and communities like Franklin Square. They were harassed forcibly displaced, and literally run over by highways to nowhere. Streets were widened, neighborhoods were split, and infrastructure was constructed to create opportunities of displacement and demarcations between the have and the have-nots of the city. If you know the history of our city, then you should understand and recognize the consequences that these ill-fated policies that manifested themselves to this very day Kids dodging traffic, hustling to eat, the addiction that strangles our city on a daily basis, the residual trauma tied into murders, and the working poor who juggle two and three jobs and, pay, and unable to pay their utility bills or rent. They're also forced to navigate a broken and deficient mass transit system 
as they try to get to work every single day. These conditions endured were direct results of policy shaped by bigotry and systemic platforms of white supremacy. We can change this daunting reality for so many Baltimoreans, but it's going to take a vision. It's going to take collaboration. It's going to take evidence-based solutions and a sense of optimism that will allow us, the legislative body, to address some of the most pressing systemic and fundamental problems of our time. We are here to make policy, and policy can no longer be the disease of Baltimore, but policy must be its prescription. Good public policy is what will begin to eradicate the structural racism that creates health and economic disparities throughout our city. Good public policy will create safe spaces for our children to learn and play. Good public policy will create the opportunities for employment and small business creation and growth. Good public policy will create and expand smart transportation options for all citizens and visitors. Good public policy is not the stuff of unicorns or some, some real cosmic explosion. We don't need a miracle to change or improve the conditions in Baltimore. We need us, this body as a city council, you as residents, and each and every one of you that are watching today. We need a legislative process that will take a good idea and solve a problem, that will analyze the data and research best practices, that will be deliberate and unintended consequences, and put forth sound, fiscally responsible, and evidence-based solutions. This is how this council under my leadership will work. We will engage in strong legislative action with comprehensive and partial vetting of facts and data to enhance our historical focus on constituent services. As your council members, we will passionately dedicate the highest level of, constitute, of, of constituent services intervening when you need our help. But we can do more. We must do more. You can expect more from this council. We are the closest representatives to you. We're here to help with government services when they don't work. We are also here to confront Baltimore systemic problems with broad, meaningful solutions tailored to the city's needs. You can expect that with diligently, I will, you can expect that we will work diligently with our mayor and our comptroller. Our successes and progress will make for you a better Baltimore because one another, and not because we are in competition with number, one another, because we're working together. These are my friends, these are my brothers, and I'm excited to get to work with you on behalf today. Our persistent challenges combined with the coronavirus makes it imperative for collaboration and partnership among city leaders now more than ever. We must disavow unnecessary tribalism and be grounded in an equitable belief that one part of our city does not have to suffer for another part to prosper. This year, the city ended 2020 fiscal year with a $14.9 million deficit and projects a $100 million, Mr. Mayor, in revenue losses again this, year, next year, this, this fiscal year. Unemployment in Baltimore reached over 10% in October and signs point to even greater worse conditions because of the coronavirus. We don't need to have a dollar to waste. We don't have the opportunity to waste this moment. Look, we all know that too often petty personal agendas and debilitating short-sightedness has all too often characterized our city politics and created government that produces good headlines for the Baltimore Sun, but entertaining chatter on social media, but not, the enough, but not enough progress for our city. No more. The stakes are too high and the needs are too great to squander. This opportunity and this moment, Baltimore deserves better and Baltimore will get better. I'm here to give you the best and to provide the bear of all the love and appreciation for our city and the people we call Baltimore, our home. You know me, we grew up together. You stood in line with me and my mother at Mondam and waiting for Santa Luke. We hooped at BNBL together, Brandon. We were classmates at Chickapin. You sat next to me, my mom, and my sister at St. Matthew's. You remember the days of Paradox on Friday nights? Hey. <laughs> Utah Street on Saturday nights. And waking up the next morning to go to Druid Hill Park every single Sunday. You cheered me on and also booed me at the Poly City football games. <laughs> we spent summers together at Gilman Upward Bound. You sat next to me at my daughter's recital. 
We also supported the Mount Washington Soccer Club girls team together. No matter where you grew up or where you live, this is our Baltimore. We are neighbors. We are friends. We are family. I ask you to hold me accountable to the oath I swore to God, to this promise to make you, that this 73rd Baltimore City Council will change your lives for the better, for the collective good. We cannot be a great city of our hearts until every resident has real opportunity to prosper. The little girl dreaming for her future in her bedroom in Reservoir Hill should have the same opportunities for success as a child across the street in Bolton Hill. The little boy playing in Carroll Park should have the same environmental protections as his peer in Patterson Park. The families on Biddle Street need to see values in their homes rise the same way those on Charles Street. The moms and dads and kids on Dolefield need to feel this as safe on their front porches as the kids and families in Medfield. Our problems are great, but so is our opportunity, our potential, and our promise. We must acknowledge the past and push forward to the future. Just like I saw a promise in my neighborhood, I see it in yours, a clear sense of hope, optimism, and vision. And like one of my great heroes, the late Congressman Elijah Cummins used to always say, I see you. I see you, Baltimore. We are one. I am you. You are me. Nick Mosby, Marilyn's husband. Nick Mosby, Nylon and Anaya's father. Nick Mosby, and yes, Eunice's orange's son. I am here because I'm motivated to make progress that I was called on to leave corporate America and fight in local politics. It is that unfinished business that I owe my mom, Eunice Orange, to ensure that people of Baltimore get a government that lives up to the promises that are often unfulfilled. Disregarded and woefully short of what we deserve as hard-working residents, I'm here so that my daughters, Nylin and Anaya, have more opportunities, less disappointments and safer, more just and more equitable Baltimore than generations past. I want for your children the same things as I want for mine, the opportunity to pursue their wildest dreams and aspirations. And I will work every single day to deliver a government that does make that possibility a reality. I don't have all the answers, and this council won't solve every single problem facing neighborhoods and families in our city. But I can assure you, Baltimore, that you can be confident that every morning we will wake up fighting for you and fighting with you, because I am you. We are you. I know what it's like to, have, to not have enough, to desperately want more. I know what it's like to have the opportunity to do better, but feel so disappointed because the kids on your block do not have those same type of opportunities. I know what it's like to come up short, but I also know what it's like, Brandon, to fight scratch and claw to make a way for my family and now to make a way for this city. I love Baltimore and I promise that we will make changes and make process, progress as we work together. It's my job, it's our job to work with the mayor and work with the comptroller, but it's your job to hold us accountable. I ask that you tune in to the council meetings so, we aren't meeting, so we're not meeting in the dark. The dark. I ask that you help us out with policy. You are the eyes and the ears of us in your communities, like my neighbor. I also ask that be proud of the neighborhood that you live in. Neighbor, but think about neighborhoods as fingers, all connected as one other hand. And it's that fist that's going to forever root out all of the ills that plague our city on a daily, daily basis. Baltimore, let's get to work. Let's lift every single voice in this city. Thank you.
the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the Till victory.